anti-reflective coatings, no glare lenses, anti-glare glasses, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're going to talk about today. How they're made, the different types, what they're good for. Do you need one? Do you not? Should you spend the money on it? So all that sort of stuff. So, the short version, the quick version. Right here, this is a lens with an anti-reflective coating. This one is a little bit different than some of the others out there. And you see you've got a little bit of that more strong blue reflection on the front. You may have seen me talk about that in some of my other videos. If you're not familiar with it, that one in particular is designed for blocking a little portion, a teeny tiny sliver of the blue light spectrum. Now, I'll put a link up here, but that is not really the ideal way to do that. It gets the job done. Honestly, that was a lens I was trying out, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the lens. Leave it at that. I have a whole other host of things I don't like about the blue light blocking anti-reflective coatings that don't really block blue light. Anyways. Back to what you want to know about with the anti-reflective coating. So, first of all, what they actually do for you is exactly what you see here. Now, this one is another one that's a little bit different. So, this is on a glass lens. I'll get into the application process later on for glass because it is a very different process than you'll find on the other lenses. All the plastic lenses, the ones you're mostly familiar with. But, you can see very largely clear. There's not a lot of reflections or glare on the surface of the lenses versus, of course, just stock lenses, no anti-reflective coating. You can see a ton of that reflection on the front surface of the lenses. You can see my phone there. You can see all the light all around, all these, all the, all the bad things you don't want to see. You definitely cannot really see my eyes through those. These, of course, still largely clear. You know, if I hit it just right, you can just barely make out the foam there in all that reflection or lack of reflection in this case. So, the different types of anti reflective coatings. Now, I'm going to switch back to these because they're my favorites. It is what it is. So the different types of anti-reflective coatings, there's different levels as you would expect with anything. Now, a lot of the less expensive ones out there are based on older technology. And those are applied, it's a little spinny thingy, believe it or not. So they are called a spin coat process, actually. Those typically, typically, especially the older applications, will have poor adhesion to the surface of the lens. These are usually the ones you see about a year out, you'll start seeing issues within the lens itself, whether that's the coating flaking off, peeling off, or you start seeing lines in it. It's just not really adhering good, and over that year of expansion and contraction, different temperatures, different moisture levels, it's really starting to give up and fail. It just, it doesn't hold up for the long term. It works. If you're gonna replace your glasses all the time, it works. It still defeats the reflections on the front of the lens, which is the primary function of an anti-reflective coating, right? Now, as you get up into premium ones, they do other things. They keep the lenses from smudging and smearing as easily. Now, that part does eventually wear off, by the way. That is not for the life of the glasses that they do that. Usually, it's about the first few months up to some of the really advanced lenses, it can last about six months to a year, but it's still a short-lived thing. Just like a wax coating or a ceramic coating on a car, it's good, it has a great application process, but it's still only gonna last for so long. Now, to the scratch-resistant portion of it, that comes down to the initial layer, which is under all of that stack. You've got, with the premium anti-reflective coatings out there, most of them are somewhere between 13 and 17 micro layers that are stacked on top of each other. Different parts of the application process have to cure for a little bit of time in each. And that's why sometimes you find glasses just take a darn long time to get. <laughs> Good anti-reflective coatings take a while to make. And that's after the lenses are made. So, yeah, there's that. There's a little nugget there for you. So, back to that spin coating process. Now, that is one of the oldest forms. Now, today you can get a little bit better spin coating. There's some different formulations out there that do adhere okay to the lenses. Still not the best out there, but they get the job done. The next one up is what's considered a 
dipped coating. And that is more of a varnish layer. You dip it down in a vat, you pull it back out, it cures with time. Fairly simple process, but still requires certain temperature levels. You don't want to have a lot of moisture. It's just like painting a car. There's a lot of variables there that you want to control to keep and ensure a consistent, good, high quality coating. So, you know, I've seen some people, there's some DIY videos out there about how to do it yourself for an anti-reflective coating. Unless you have a vacuum sealed chamber in your house that keeps out all of the moisture, all of the dust and dirt particles, and can maintain seven to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. I don't think any of us have that. So, if you do, by all means, go ahead and try and do your own anti-reflective coating and see how that turns out. Until then, leave it to the labs with an entire warehouse section dedicated to it because these machines take up an absolute ton of space. Now, you might see a freestanding device. That's not all there is to it. That's just where the coating is applied. Speaking of that, so these big fancy machines with their vacuum chambers, this is the top tier. This is the what you'll hear referred to as the premium in the anti-reflective coatings. These guys are applied in a vacuum chamber with an ion beam blast. So you've got your chemical formulation, a little cap. That is hit by an ion beam. It is scattered inside the chamber that has a vacuum pull on it so that that is evenly applied across the surface of the lens. It is compacted down very tightly on the surface of the lens. Now those, as far as plastic coatings go, plastic lens coatings go, that is going to give you the most scratch resistant layer you can get on a plastic lens. Now, of course, as we all know, glass lenses are far superior in scratch resistance. In optics, they still exceed most other plastic lens materials by a pretty good margin. It's not negligible. You can see it, especially at the far, far distances. So, um, getting off on other things and rambling, and I could do that all day long. Now, that last technology I mentioned is what you will typically find as the final portion for a glass lens. Now, the reason I say the final portion, you actually have to prep glass lenses differently than you would plastic lenses. Yeah, so they are much more slick. The surface of the lens is significantly harder than plastic lenses, of course. Duh, we knew that. But with the glass lenses, they actually have to be micro etched for that coating to adhere to the surface of the lens. Then the process from there forward is the same, but that first step is extremely important. If that is not done properly, you will see even glass lenses have a failing anti-reflective coating. It's fairly unusual. Most do a very good job at doing that if they offer an anti-reflective coating. Now, some places you will find they don't offer an anti-reflective coating on glass, and that's because the way it's done is expensive to do it right. There you go. More little pieces of information to the puzzle for you. Now, I mentioned earlier on the blue blocking anti-reflective coating. So what that is, essentially, if you've ever worn sunglasses that had a mirror on the front of the lens, that is the short, simple, sweet version of what these blue blocking coatings are. So they have a very slight blue mirror on the front surface of the lens. Whatever spectrum the manufacturer has determined is the blue light part they want to block, this will be that color. So in this case, it's 420 to 450 nanometers. It's that nice, medium, rich blue. I did it because it looks good in these, and as I mentioned, the lenses were a trial situation, so it works. It looks good. <laughs> but yes, so that is basically just a mirror on the front side of the lens that's reflecting away a small portion of the blue light spectrum. Don't you love it? So that's why it's not really, and why I mentioned it isn't exactly an anti-reflective coating in the first place. It just doesn't do that. It actually reflects away more light by its nature and what it's designed to do. You're better off getting the material that has the blue blocking built in to the material. Now that is the one place glass lags behind all the plastics. Nobody makes one that blocks blue light. 
least not that I've found yet. Now, if I do find that, you guys will be the first ones to know, because that will be exciting. It's a great thing. Now, as far as that last, the ion beam process, that's what we have here, that's what we have here. Two different mixtures, two different results, a lot of different ways to get there. In the end, it's the same process, except for the starting point on the glass lenses, as I mentioned earlier on. Now, if you have any questions about any of that, if you would like to see any more specifics about any one process in particular, I would be happy to dive into that because I know this is a lot of information in one video. I'm trying not to go too, too deep into each of the aspects, but just to give you some idea that there's different levels and different ways to get anti-reflective coatings out there and you definitely don't want to cheap out on that and that's actually what inspired this video so my video about cheap anti-reflective coatings failing and how miserable that is for you i'm not laughing at you i'm just grinning that that's how it works there are a lot of things believe it or not and contrary to advertising out there you definitely get what you're paying for it's not always about cutting out the middleman. In fact, a lot of times, they are the middleman. There's a brain twister for you, isn't it? But that's all I've got for today, guys. So if you want any more information on this, let me know. If there's anything you don't think I covered well, definitely let me know. I'll get back into that. But otherwise, like, subscribe, follow along, ring the bell so you see the latest in the series of stuffs coming out. Let me know anything you would like to see that maybe isn't an anti-reflective coating or anything else. Anything related to right here, I've got you covered. I will catch you guys next time.